Hi, everyone. Uh, can folks hear me right now? I will check the chat. Awesome. All right, welcome to the community workshop on temporary state. I am Jess and I'm an engineer here um, and I love to teach, which is why I'm here. Uh, and I'm excited to see all of you here. So I see folks from all over, which is really awesome. So to give a quick overview of what we're gonna cover today, we're going to be building on top of sort of basic retool knowledge. So we're not gonna go through the very basics of how to build a retool app. However, if you have done any sort of web development in the past, a lot of this will probably be easy to follow. So stick around. Uh, if you've used temporary state before and you've had to wonder what, whether you need it or not, uh, we're going to cover all of that today. So we're going to uh, look at a couple of examples. Uh, we're going to step back and sort of discern when and why we need temporary state. So, you know, usually you get told what to do first and then you see the examples, but we're going to flip it today. Um, and then we're going to hands on build a couple of examples. Um, and uh, Again, I am an engineer here, and you can always find me on Twitter at just typing. Uh, before we get started, I wonder if some folks here want to share um, maybe where are you dialing in from? Um, what's the, you know, where are you using Retool right now and what you're hoping to learn today? Um, I can't really see folks, but can folks just like un uh, maybe put into the chat um, or unmute? Yeah, can people add, um, maybe if they turn on their cameras, I just saw someone pop in and then pop out. Hi, everybody. Okay. Hi, Alina. Yeah, let's... Hi, Alina, you want to kick us off? Yeah, sure. Um, thanks for the intro. So um, I'm so excited for this workshop. This is the second one that Retool is hosting. Um, and as, as Jess mentioned, we're, mentioned, we're going to talk about temp state today. Um, so Jess is going to um, go over her presentation for 20 minutes, and then we'll leave 10 minutes at the end for questions. But we're also making, aiming to make this as discussion-based as possible. So um, to the audience, feel free to ask your questions during the presentation, and then Jess will get to them um, as she can. And this workshop is recorded. Um, so afterwards, we'll share out the link in Slack on the community forum, and then I will be emailing it out um, over email within a few days, um, but hopefully sooner, um, and, and send it out. So yeah, I'll, I'll hand it back. I'll hand the mic back to Jess. Um, if anyone wants to test out, I guess, seeing if they're, if they can un like, um, show themselves in the camera or, or unmute, um, that would be great. Otherwise, yeah, just share where you're dialing in from in the chat and we can go from there. So go ahead, Jess. Yeah. Go yeah. Any yours. any brave souls want to intro introduce themselves? All right. I guess we're all very shy this morning. Um, that's all right. All right. We're going to jump right in. So we're actually going to start with examples, and it's going to be a quiz. But don't worry, it's not about being right or wrong. Um, so we're going to see five examples in a row. And we're not going to stop in between, but just for each of them, uh, write it down somewhere, maybe on a piece of paper or, you know, a text, uh, text edit or something. Um, think about, do we need temporary state to build this example in Retool? And if we do, how many temporary state variables do we need? So let's take a look. All right, we're going to start with a very basic example. Basically, we have a counter, and when you click, the count goes up. So that is the first example. Do we need temp state? How many temp state variables do we need? Um, here's the second example. So we have a table that has people in it. And when we click on each row, we see details about that person. So we see Jason here has his customer ID is three and that's his pet photo. So do we need temp state and do we, how many temp state variables? All right, the third example. So here we have one side where we have a modal when it's 
Closed, it says it's closed. When I click open modal, this says it's open. On this side, this always shows the selected tab. So when it says customers here, this says customers, and then it'll update to employees. All right, fourth example. So this is a, uh, a Teams Explorer. So you can see the top level teams here. And as I click into each of them, I can expand the sub teams. So do we need temp state and how many temp state variables? All right, last one. This is like our original counter, but three of them. So if I you know, click this, that counter goes up and same here. All right, so those are our five examples. Um, any folks want to share their answers? You brave souls. <laughs> Yeah, you, I think you can just, um, I don't know if people have permissions to show themselves on camera. So you just raise your hand and chat, and then I can invite you to participate. I, I think that's how it's going to work with Livestorm. Or people can just share the answer in chat also, either or video or chat. All right, I don't see any answers, but we can go through basically the um, each example. So the, the it's a bit of a trick question. Um, so basically we do need the temp state variable in the first, the fourth and the fifth examples. We don't need it for the table row and the modal and the tab status. Uh, and we, we're gonna ex uh, go into why. The reason that um, the teams and the multiple counters need multiple um, or one in theory is for the teams one, we're gonna dive deeper, but basically we wanna track which uh, team was clicked here. And then we wanna track which team was clicked here. Um, so that gives you maybe a sense. We haven't really defined temp state yet, um, but this might give you a sense of like, okay, uh, when do we need it? When do we not need it? Um, does anybody have any thoughts on how we might define a general principle for when we need temp state or not based on these examples? I see Adara is typing. Oh, Christina, do you want to share? Oh, no, sorry, I just click on this participants, but I, I don't know. No, um, when I saw the questions uh, uh, in the first case, I, I thought, yeah, maybe one uh, state and in the five as well. But for the other uh, three, I did, I'm not sure. I wasn't sure. OK, got it. So yeah, we can definitely um, take a look at where, why we do or don't need it. Uh, I see Adara, you wrote that if you need to save the state somewhere else instead of ac accessing it directly from the inspector. So I, yes, you're getting onto this idea of why did we not need temp state for two and three, right? Two here. It, there is something being saved right now, which is the current row, right? We do need to know which row is currently selected to show the one, the, the details here. The reason we don't need a temp state, we can edit the app and see, is that Retool actually offers a way to, already has a built-in way to get the current row. So if we look at um, what we're using here, we're using the customer's table dot selected row. So I did not have to build this. This is actually a property on the table itself. So uh, a nifty thing about Retool is you can always find the documentation for any element by clicking these three uh, dots, and then you'll um, be able to look up any of the properties right here. So that's the selected row property that we're using. So that's why even though we had to track the currently selected row, Retool already does this, does that for us. And so we don't need to create our own temp state. Um, similarly, 
It's the same idea for the modal in the selected tab. So if we look behind the scenes, this is referencing example modal dot opened. And the dot opened property is something that exists on the modal itself. So again, we can view the docs and then look at uh, oh, the properties are, I guess, not showing, but we can always look at the state here. Um, so this is uh, basically all of the things that we can use and opened is this property. And it's the same idea for the selected tab on this tabbed container. So whenever you think you might need a temp state, it's always a good idea to check if Retool already has a built-in way to do it because then you don't have to do it yourself. Does that make sense, uh, Christina? Does that answer the why two and three don't need temp state? All right, awesome. So now we can take a look. The, I think the counter seems kind of a natural, right? We understand there's a, a number and we have to store the current number and that's being counted, right? Incremented. So the Teams one, let's, we're going to come back to this one because it's probably the most complex example. Um, but maybe now we can step back and say, when do we need temp state? We basically want it when we're tracking a variable uh, that can change while a user is interacting with your app. And that's going to be a variable that you, you don't want to save to your backend. You actually want it to be just while the app is open. So like, there's no reason we would really want to save that counter to our database, for example. And then as we found, there's a lot of these situations where Retool already provides a way. So um, we just definitely always want to check, um, is there a built-in way to do this? All right, so let's build some examples now and we're gonna see all the methods that you can use on temp state. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate the counter, the simple counter and the multiple counters. And then we're also going to dig into the Teams Explorer. Um, so let's create our uh, counter examples. So let's get rid of this so it's not confusing. We're gonna start with an empty slate. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's build the very simple counter example. So this will just say the count is, and we're going to fill this in with a temporary state variable, which is gonna hold the current count. So to create a temp state variable, we just go to plus button and add temp, temp state. And we can call this count we can give it an initial value. So the initial value here can be any sort of JavaScript expression. So it could be like, uh, you know, zero. Um, it could also be like referencing a query's value. For now, let's start with zero here. Um, and then we can then reference it here using the double curly braces. So count dot value. So there we go, count is zero. And then we want this to increment the count. So let's make this Let's give this a better name, plus button. And then all we have to do is add an event handler. So when we click this, we want this to be uh, incremented. So we could do this in actually two ways. We could choose to write the script directly on the buttons, click handler, or we can also trigger a query that we put down here. It's really a matter of style. I always like to put my code down here um, just so I can see everything in one place, but really it's really up to you and how you like to organize your code. So um, I'm going to create a new JavaScript query here and call this increment count. And now we're gonna see the uh, one of the operations you can do on, so we can say uh, const uh, current count equals count dot value. So that's similar to what we did here to read the count. Uh, we can say the new count is just gonna be the current count plus one. And then the method we're going to call on the temp state val uh, variable is called set value. So we can say count dot set value, the new count. So this is one of the two uh, methods that you can set 
can call on a temporary state variable. Let's save this and let's complete our quick handler here. All right, so now when I click this, it's going to go up. That's our simple example. All right, let's implement this slightly complex one. For this one, I'm going to use a list view. And so instead of one count, we have several. Um, if you've never used list view before, it's a pretty nifty component that lets you basically do repeated, um, take, take one unit and just repeat it a number of times. So in this case, we want something that says the count is, and then we're gonna fill that in. And then we want a button next to it. So this will be our maybe plus one uh, list button. All right, and we can make that look a little bit better like that. So the question is, how do we want to store this information, right? We've got three numbers we want to keep track of here. And it's actually because this list view, we're telling it it has three rows. So I'm going to show you uh, what I was talking about earlier, which is um, we can actually put this all into one single temporary state variables. We can absolutely create three of them, but I'm going to show you how you can make that even more compact. So what you can do is create a temporary state. Let's call this list counts. And instead of creating uh, basically one single value here, we can make it an object, which means we can store any number of keys mapped to values. In fact, I'm going to go one step further and show you that you can actually create this can come from anywhere. Let's pretend our data is coming from somewhere else, right? So I might have written a query to pull data to initialize the counts here. We'll just call um, starting counts, starting list counts. So this is going to return a mapping. We're going to map the row number to the value. So we can do something like this, right? And if we want to do four, we can do that too. So then we can say the starting list counts, this is starting list counts dot value. So there we go, right? So our initial value, every time we load this app, is gonna be that mapping. To get it into here, uh, we can reference list counts dot value. And in a list view, it's like a table. You can use that special I variable. So this is how we're gonna get the counts. You notice we only have three right now. And that's because we've hard coded this to three. So instead of doing that, we're going to say object.keys of our list counts dot value. And we're going to take the length of that. So now there's four. Basically, this is like how many key value pairings are there in this um, list counts value. There's four of them. So now we have our starting state. Now we basically want to do this. Um, additional uh, increment. So it's going to look very similar to before. We are going to use one different method. So we're going to add an event handler. A Instead of increment count, we're going to create a new query. Um, we want this to be JS code. And we can make this const. So the, the special i variable we will also have access to here. So the um, index, we can actually just say it's i. Um, and then we can use that. So our current count will be our list counts dot value, and it will be i. Our new count will then just be the same, current count uh, plus one. And finally, we can set the list counts, but we're not going to use set value. We're going to use a method called set in. And the reason we want to use set in is basically it's we don't want to replace the entire dictionary, right? Right now, the uh, let's say this for a second. Our list counts is this whole mapping. 
So we don't want to have to recreate this entire mapping. We just want to update the row that we had. So here we can do uh, just the index and then set the value to new count. So let's try that. So now when I click this, let's just double check. We have our, this is going to get triggered. So now that's going up and that is how we get our counters to work. So we've now seen everything that you can do with a temp state variable. You can set it, it's an initial value, and then you can read it inside of your UI or inside of your code. And then you can update the values with two methods. One is set value and one is set in. Um, any questions? Y'all are now experts at temp state. This is like all, all the things you need to know. All right, we're gonna go look at that one complex example. So how do we get from here to this more complex teams, right? Which is much more like a real use case. So let's take a look under the covers. So to understand this app, it's actually very simple. Um, the main thing is that the demo data, let's, you can create something like this for yourself as long as basically you have a mapping of your teams. So you have, here I've created it as like a, a mapping from the team ID, like given every team like a, a little username, so to speak. And I mapped it to, um, you know, a display name just because it's nicer to, to you know, talk about engineering rather than eng. And then every team just has the list of its child teams. And then on top of that, we just identify which teams are gonna be in this left column um, to start out with, the level one team. So, uh, oh, uh, okay. Uh, Alina, do you need me to move my screen? I'm just noticing some of the chat messages. Um, I, yeah, can you pin it? I'm, um, I got a comment also that maybe you can, if you could pin your screen, then it wouldn't move, but I can also oh, just have um, shape to it. Um, I'm not sure what pin means. Yeah. Is, is it, I, to me, it's showing as a full screen on my screen. How about for others? Now it seems fine. It looks okay. Good. Got it. All right, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so in this uh, example, we've just said, I've created some dummy data, but basically you could very easily create this for yourself. Maybe your team data is coming from an HR system like Workday or Rippling, but you could pull that data in and then put it into this format where you have a dictionary and then a, a list of the starting top level teams. Um, then the main thing um, is, uh, there's the two temporary states that we talked about uh, earlier, which is I just need to keep track of when I click this button, um, I want to kind of, to use that word pin, I want to say pinning on engineering, like that's the one that's selected right now. And then that tells us which team to show the sub teams for. Um, so the way that this works is whenever I click this button, you can see that there's two event handlers here. So the first one is setting the level one team that's selected. So this one is, there's a basically a, a temp state variable that's just setting it to the, the selected team um, ID. You can see that this value is now eng, right? So basically the logic that happens is I just take the index it's kind of like how we did that um, counter example earlier. We can get the index of the team that's been selected, and then we can take the the item um, at that the the team at this index. So it's index zero, and then we set the value of the selected team to that ID. So it's incredibly simple, and it's actually incredibly similar to the um, counter example we just did, and the selected level two team works the same way. So instead of looking at this list, we're just setting this list. You're also gonna notice that there's a second event handler here. 
Now, why do we need that? So think about this example where I have two levels expanded, right? At this point, if I change it, if I change to re, uh, recruiting, for example, I don't want the second level to be selected for the go-to-market teams, right? So I want to also clear out um, whatever is selected on the second level. So that's why I uh, basically have two triggers, right? A trigger the clear level two team and also select the first level. And clearing the level two team is just setting that temporary state of the selected team to, to null. Any questions about this example? Feel free to just unmute if you have any questions. All right, um, well, that we can review what we just looked at. Basically, we had one counter, which showed us starting with an initial, oh, I see someone's typing. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Um, thanks, Corey and Norma. So we saw the basic example of a counter, um, and we could basically set an initial value um, we saw the multiple counter example, which showed that we could use a whole query as our starting state and that it could be an entire object instead of a single value. Um, and then we could use the set in method instead of set value. Um, then we saw how that third, the counter example was basically very similar to showing, you know, a list of teams that you might want to click through. So that could be much more practical um, and hopefully gives you some ideas of where you might use temporary state in your apps. Um, and finally, I'll call out that um, everything is covered in our docs as well. So you can always, if you want to uh, refresh your memory, go to this page on temp state. All right, so we're actually at the end, um, just right on time. So it's, you know, learning is always this hands-on process. Um, See, can we get the values from an uploaded file instead of a query? Um, actually, uh, so yes, um, I can show you how that might work. Um, basically, we do have a component that lets you do a file upload. So um, somebody like a user, an end user could just upload a set of, I don't know, values, and then you could have some logic that creates the, basically references the, the value of the uploaded file. So happy to also answer that and show you offline. Um, so yeah, uh, that would be a great, you know, first example to try out, uh, Nikhil. Um, so to practice uh, using temp state. Um, feel free to also ask in the community forum. We have uh, community.retool.com. If you haven't joined, um, you can create an account and lots of people ask and answer questions there. And finally, uh, feel free to reach out on Twitter directly as well. All right, thanks everyone. I will also share these slides to everyone um, that attended today. And there's some appendix um, items that I didn't cover, but might just be a good additional um, you know, review. Awesome, thank you so much, Jess, super informative. Um, yeah, as she mentioned, we'll follow up with um, detailed answers to the questions and then also a link to this recording, which will be available for anyone to view, even people um, you know, who are not here today or registered. So yeah, find us on community.retool.com and we'll see you around. Thanks everyone for coming, bye.